The last thing someone who is going through depression need is judging. So don't judge anybody. Just let them know that you're willing to hear everything that they have to say. Don't tell them you understand because you don't understand what they are feeling. That feeling is sometimes undescribable. So we have a very important conversation to be had. So let's get into today's conversation about depression. So it took me some time before I get to do this video, mainly because I don't want to offend anyone. So I'll do my very best and make this quick as possible. Firstly, I don't want to dismiss those of you that are dealing with depression in a very severe way where it is basically like a mental issue but um, I needed to have this conversation because I find there is this there is this view that everyone who is suffering with depression is mentally ill and because of that reason I think I needed to make this video <coughs> I needed to make a video about it. All right, so let's get into this video. Hi, welcome back. So after doing this video, about to edit the video, to me the message was lost in that video because of how much expressing how I feel about people's views on depression and I was so seriously emotionally affected by how I felt when trying to translate what I feel is wrong about the healthcare system when coming to diagnosing emotional depression and Grapping, putting everybody in this same bowl, in this pot, everybody. You have this, this is the sign, so everybody that have this sign going in this one pot. And so much of misdiagnosed human beings is inside of that pot. <laughs> so, I had to delete that entire video and do this all over again because I want you to hear me without being so emotional and I want you to hear me without any crying but, but I just want to be clear I took off the hoodie I took off the hat I couldn't take off the glasses because I want to be able to truly see you I mean I can't literally see you but I'm, you understand what I'm saying so I want this message to be heard so let's get into depression. So, what is depression? It varies. We have a lot of people suffering with emotional depression and being diagnosed the same way as somebody who is dealing with mental depression, given the same type of medication and getting them even more sick. And that is the danger in this problem because you have someone who is emotionally depressed because of pain, sadness, loneliness, frustration, and all of these other symptoms. And some people just want that pain to just go away because when you're feeling that way you feel worthless you feel ugly you feel so much of negative things about yourself you probably say what is she talking about how does she know about all of this well I am just speaking from my own experience 
and from someone who dealt with emotional depression and I say dealt with because I have found an avenue for me to channel how I feel when I am in that state so for me emotional depression you just want that pain to just go away. You just don't want to feel hurt. You don't want to feel frustrated. You don't want to feel ugly. You don't want to feel bitter. You don't want to be mad. You don't want to be angry. You don't want that lonely feeling. You just want all of it <coughs> to go away. You just want that pain to stop. So you would do anything that you could, anything that you could to remove that pain. Nothing is wrong with you mentally, you know. But you haven't found that avenue to channel that pain, that loneliness, that deep pain that you're feeling. You haven't found a way to channel that. And that was my issue. I didn't know how to channel my anger, my loneliness, my sadness. I needed help. Help in a sense, I just want to be able to relate to someone how I am feeling, express to some. I don't want nobody to say anything. I just want somebody to listen, you know? And I at this, <coughs> the last person that you would want to go to is your family. Not that they won't listen, because I am telling you. I come from a big family. I am sure if I take up that phone and call any of my sisters, any one of them, I am sure that they are going to listen to me. But then you know what I would say to myself? I'd be like, Kenda, you know what they have going on. You know how their morning starts. You know how their day was today. You know, you don't know what is going on. Why you want to burden them with your burdens? Why? Now I know that some part of me know <laughs> that they wouldn't feel that way. But that is how I am justifying not calling no family member. And not only my sisters, I have aunts that I could call <coughs> and talk to them if they would either come by me or I would go by them. And I know if I call them, they would come or I would go to them and they would listen to me and they would give you a serious talking to. So it's not like I don't have people to talk to. I have people, if I'm sure, if I call and say, you know, I just want to talk, they will either come or they will just, I will go or they will just, we will just talk on the phone and they will listen. But again, as I just said, it's about you justifying your reasons why you don't want to call anybody. And you will sit there with this pain. So I... No, as a, as a point in my time, I just wanted the pain to go away. And a day I was just like, I had enough of this. I had enough of this crying. I had enough of this loneliness. And you just want to hurt yourself. And I did attempt to hurt myself because I just wanted it to stop. And again, as I said, it's not because I am mentally disturbed or anyway. It's just that I just want that pain to go away to go away because I couldn't handle it no more and I didn't want to burden nobody with my burdens so there was just a day I was like oh you're just tired so I had some alcohol had some Valium some very strong Valium and I just took everything and when I realized that they phoned me and I recovered I was really angry really angry so this is where the story came about with why I am talking about not everybody who is depressed is mentally unstable when this happened they took me to the hospital and if when I recovered the way that I recovered they tell me they're selling me to the madhouse I fully well know that I am not mentally ill. I just want my pain to go away. So, I was fighting back, really fighting back with that decision because I just did not want to go anywhere. 
So a nurse came to me and to this day, that nurse and I are really close. She came to me and she said, Kenna, the more you fight is the more they would want to send you there and keep you there. Stop fighting them. Don't fight, don't argue, don't just go with the flow. Do you want me to go with you on the ambulance? I said, yes. And she said to me, I will go with you on the ambulance. And I am promising you, I'm gonna, you're gonna come back to the general hospital. I want to make sure that you don't stay there. And uh, when I got there, she said, don't say nothing. You just, doctor, ask you any questions, answer. Don't be aggressive, don't do nothing because at the end of the day, you're giving them more reason to think that something wrong with you, but you know nothing is wrong with you. And I, I listened to her and exactly what she promised is exactly what happened. I went there, I listened to the doctor, I expressed to the doctor what was going on and, and whatever. The doctor asked me if I need medication. I was like, no, I don't need medication because it's not, it's not like that, you know, and she's like, okay. And... They sent me back to the general hospital and I spent a few more days there and they sent me home. When they did send me home though, they did prescribe an outpatient clinic, all right? Okay, so I think in this outpatient clinic, you know, because they clearly understood that nothing is wrong with me mentally. Attending this outpatient clinic, when you go there, now, I am not here to insult anybody or anything like that, please. But when you go there, to this outpatient clinic, you are interacting with people who are severely mentally ill. Some of them even people who live in on the streets. It's not like a situation where you have appointments. It's, it's not even a situation. It's like everybody in just one big grab. And it's like, what? I take myself out of that place. Then the nurse was like, why are you going? What is wrong? And I explained to her, she's like, I, I totally understand and agree because a lot of people have the same issues that you have. But she said, listen to me, go and talk to the doctor. Express what you just said to me to that doctor and see what they will tell you to do. So I did that <laughs> and I went into the room. I talked to the lady and she was like, they tried many years to fix this, to have days with people who just need someone to talk to and, and not stop them up with medication, to have days where they deal with the severe mentally ill people because on many occasions, the people that come in here is not mentally ill. It's just people just want to talk and to just express how they're feeling and somebody to not judge them, but hear them. And they can't talk to their spouse, they can't talk to their family because they, every family have this tendency of judging. I don't say my family is that. I am not saying, but that's what the doctor said to me. So she said, you know, it's easier for someone to come and talk to a doctor, a stranger, because they're not going to be judged. But they are going to be heard and that is exactly how I felt and she said to me she gave me steps to follow she gave me her personal number she's like any time you think you just need to, to vent and talk you call me we set up an appointment I will go and then so that's how I dealt with my situation so my point here is not everybody who is dealing with depression is mentally unstable. And our healthcare system, and I'm sure it's not only where I'm from that issue is, but <laughs> our healthcare system when dealing with people with depression needs to change because not everybody is mentally disturbed when dealing with depression. From the time anyone tries to hurt themselves, 
the first thing someone thinks is this person crazy is person mentally ill let's stop them up with medication medication that you don't even need medication that you don't even need they will stop you and have you like a zombie like a total zombie walking around and then when the medication starts to wear off uh, it's to feel ill so your stomach side to feel sick I know that I didn't need medication so, and I know all I needed to do was find a way to channel how I was feeling and ladies and gentlemen that is how my YouTube channel came about I started off with Instagram making my videos actually my niece introduced me to Instagram and because I saw her posting videos, I was like, what is this about? And the way the video was made, I just liked the concept of the videos. And then my daughter said, well, mommy, this is what it is. So I downloaded the Instagram and I started making my little cooking videos on Instagram. And then in 2013, I started to do YouTube. But not seriously, but to channel the way that I am feeling. And let me tell you something. I could be feeling how horrible, how terrible. Once I get in a kitchen, it's like, I am not even joking. When I get into a kitchen, it's like a whole rainbow of beautiful emotion and feeling is coming out here. It's just, it's just marvelous. And I thank God that he guided me to an avenue to deal with, again, my frustration, my sadness, my loneliness, the how ugly I feel about myself, how worthless I feel about myself, all right? That pain, you see this pain, this pain? It was so much. I just needed an avenue to, to just totally get rid of it and I thank God that YouTube came around and I was able to use that now I've always said if zero people watch my videos at that point in time it wasn't about okay I need people to watch my my videos it wasn't even about that for me I, it wasn't even a thought right my whole thing was that avenue that I have found to feel better is what is more important to me and I didn't understand the whole idea of YouTube and how it works and all of that at that point again it's about posting a video putting it there and just feeling good when I do it so when I get in the kitchen and I feel in a certain way my food will taste woo wee at that point so I was like <clears throat> I am not only feeling good emotionally, but when I feel like this and I get to the kitchen, my food is amazing. So I was like, mm, I'm going to use this opportunity, channel my energy and all this negative energy, I'm going to channel it into cooking. And that was the way that I removed myself from this depressive state. I am not saying that depression is not to be treated with medication, okay? Because depression is very serious. It is very serious. And anyone who is thinking about hurting themselves doesn't always need to be drugged up on medication. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to and listen and not judge. And that is what we need in the, out here. People who are dealing with this thing. The first thing we need, we, we need to stop doing is drugs, 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 drugs. No, not all the time, everybody. Even if sometimes people who are mentally disturbed and are really, really depressed. The first thing we tend to do is stop them up with medication. Sometimes, you know, that person really, really just needs... And air, all a person need 
is an heir. I evaluate this person, find out what that person really likes to do, what brings them happiness, at what point do they feel the most relaxed and happy. And if you could, as a family member, or as a friend, even a total stranger, if you could, help that person to be in that space, that would make such a great difference in that person's life. It's all about care, caring for the person next to you. It doesn't even have to be a family member. Just care, because that's what we all need, love. We need to feel like we always have somebody having our back, right, say? So what if you have nobody having your back? Then what, you're just gonna fall apart? I could, I could also understand that view, but I'm just simply saying, Having someone back is not like, oh my gosh, every minute, how are you going, you need this, you no. But just know that, okay, I can pick up a phone and I'm sure if I pick up this phone and call this person, this person will listen to me. That is what I mean. But not literally coming over every minute, calling every minute. They don't have to do no calling, they don't have to do no coming. But the person who is going through that depression, no well look. If I call this person, I am sure if I call, they will not judge, they will not do anything but just listen. And if somebody say they want to talk to you, don't judge them. Because the last thing somebody who is dealing with depression wants you to do is only judge, judge, judge. That makes you feel more ill. I, I am not even joking. So my card got full, I had to stop. So let me just, in conclusion, I want to say, as I left off just now there, the last thing someone who is going through depression need is judging. So don't judge anybody. Just let them know that you're willing to hear everything that they have to say. Don't tell them you understand because you don't understand what they are feeling. That feeling is sometimes undescribable. That, that depressive feeling. And as I mentioned, that everyone who is dealing with a form of emotional depression is needing medication. All they need is a support system. A support system being they could just talk and you could just listen. Wait for them to ask you a question. And even though they ask you a question, be very mindful that this person is already emotionally dealing with a lot. So be mindful how you answer. You're not going to baby them or sugarcoat anything for them. But just be mindful with your answer. Don't say you understand as I just said because you don't. Just say, I am here for you. I am willing to listen. And I am not here to judge. Listen. Give them a hug. Hold their hand. And let them know that you're always there with your listening ear to hear, let them cry, give them a shoulder, let them be able to express how they feel without being judged and feeling uncomfortable. And that is all people with depression. Well, I am speaking from the place of emotional depression that I dealt with. I am not speaking about a severe case and even though there are people who are dealing with emotional depression, very, very depressed in an emotional way, don't need medication. I'm not saying that either. But I'm just saying, if you know someone who is dealing with depression in an emotional way, help them to channel that pain that they're feeling by doing something. Find out what they like to do. What would they like to do? Would they like to go for a drive? What it is that they do that bring them great peace and, and relaxation? And if it's possible that you could provide that few minutes of, of relaxation for them, it wouldn't hurt you. And 90% of the time, people who are dealing with emotional depression, what you have to do to help this person, the way you can assist this person, it doesn't even need you spending a dime. Seriously, you know, it's si simple things that you could do with this individual just, just to make them laugh, just, just to make them feel love. That, that is all already. That is all. They just need to know that somebody is there. Somebody is there that they could call. And I'm sure if I call this person, 
this person would laugh at me, would take my mind away. For example, as I just said to you, how I dealt and removed myself from being so severely depressed emotionally all the time, till I just wanted all this pain and ugliness, sadness, loneliness, frustration, all that feeling, I just wanted it to go suicidal thoughts. Is I use YouTube cooking for me. And as I said, if I get zero views on my videos, it wasn't so much of a big deal for me because at the end of the day, this is how I am recovering from that terrible space that I was in, right? I no longer hate myself. Yes, I was terribly obese. And that's another thing too. So I have, cooking is my main thing that really, really helps me, all right? But you see running, when I put on my sneakers and my workout clothes and I hit that pitch and I start to work out, that's another form of total relaxation. And you might be like, is she crazy? How on earth going and exercise is relaxing? Well, it is for me and it's, it really helped me with my depression. I am not going to lie. That, but mainly cooking. But there are days obviously where I am not cooking. So I would want something to do. I would put that sneakers in my foot, change my clothes and get out of the house and go running for a good hour. And let me tell you something, it didn't only help me with my weight loss because I mean, I was really obese and you know, this is, this is where I was and this is where I'm at now. So I thank God for those two things, YouTube and my little form of exercise because I would get there and it's like, Put that music in my ears and I hit that road and I start running. That's it for me. I am good. I would come back home feeling so good. So if I can't go running, but I am feeling to go in the kitchen and put up a pot and make a video for you all, that is what I would do. And I think, you know, when you're obese, you tend to hate yourself even more. And it have days. So I will tell you some days where I am dealing with depression in a bad way. After weight loss, because I did no weight training. As I said, I use my exercise as a way to deal with depression, right? So now I have lost so much weight. I have to deal with all this excess skin and stuff. But then as I always would have to preach to myself, is the journey be proud of your journey because that journey wasn't easy to get where i'm at as i said this is where i was and this is where i'm at so that journey wasn't easy so i always have to be remembered re reminding myself of how hard that journey was and i was successful in my journey and now what i would do is a lot of, i do intermittent fasting right so that is helping me to maintain my weight I am not on no special diet. I don't have time with the dieting because I don't work for me, but intermittent fasting. And it's a lifestyle change, plain and simple. So find your avenue in which you could channel your pain emotionally. And I am telling you that would help. And if it is that you cannot really Release yourself in that form of what brings you great peace, legal peace. I would say that if it is going to rob a store, giving you great peace to do it. That's not what I'm saying, eh? What I'm saying is something legally and morally right. <laughs> do that and relax your mind, relax yourself. And you will see slowly you would get yourself out of that depressive state and if it is you cannot get there for just doing those things please reach out to any healthcare professional within your area and try and get the help that you would need i strongly suggest if it is you can't do it this way 
get help. But never always let doctors drug you up as your first and only avenue of feeling better. And even if you are on medication, slowly, if it is you could, slowly try some way to just win yourself out of that medication. As I say, by distracting yourself, by doing things that you enjoy doing, you know, going around your community in places that you really never go and just walk, you know, find things to do. And I'm telling you, these things really work. They work for me and they work for a lot of people. And I am sure that it, it could help you. I really hope this message touched somebody today because I'm not just speaking by hearsay or just, you know, talking just because I could. I'm speaking from experience again and I just needed to share this because one of my reasons for really bringing this message here is because I watch another YouTuber that I religiously watch which is Alex, he's a reaction channel and he was talking about a psychiatrist that he went to that was only stuffing him with medication and he know that he this is not what he needed this is not he was being wrongly diagnosed and that was exactly my point you know they would stuff you with stuff misdiagnose you and today this man is 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 um arrested you know and i think that was my main reason for doing this video one of my main reasons for doing this video because there are so many doctors and healthcare system that does this nonsense just stuff you with medication and get you out of the office they make the money they don't care what happened to you and you have to go along walking around like a zombie and everything about you just change you're a shell of yourself and that is not always right and alex made that make that point so clear and it's exactly what i have always thought all these years and i've always been opposed to doctors just stuffing people with medication and you see suicide suicide is not only for people who are mentally ill suicide also affects people who are dealing with emotional depression you are depressed in an emotional way as I said, all you want is to hurt yourself. And you see, suicide is one of the main cause of just wanting to end yourself. Suicide. And that is what I tried to do, right? So again, suicide doesn't only affect people who are mentally ill. Yeah. So you're feeling frustrated, you're feeling depressed emotionally, and you want to hurt yourself. You commit suicide. You're mentally ill. I am mentally ill because I try to hurt myself, okay? Because I am dealing with depression in an emotional way and I just want that pain to stop. So because I am depressed, I try to hurt myself, suicidal thoughts. I am mentally ill. So I am being stuffed up with all these drugs, all these drugs I am being stuffed up with. And that is not even the case. Suicide and hurting yourself is an option in your head because you want all this pain to just go away. You want all this pain to stop. And you just want to feel better. You just want to smile. You just want to be happy. But really and truly, all you need is a listening ear. You, all you want is a listening ear to hear you, to understand you. Please talk to someone. Be your brother's keeper. Help someone feel better today without even spending a penny. Just letting them know that your shoulder is there for them. Your air is there for them. You have hugs waiting for them. These little things can mean so much to somebody who is dealing with emotional depression, not just mental depression. Even if someone is dealing with, me with is depressed mentally, all these things could also assist them along with the medication that they would need. So I do hope that whoever is watching this, if you are not dealing with this yourself, but you know someone who is dealing with depression, whether it be mentally depressed or emotionally depressed, and you could try and use some of these little tactics that I have mentioned here to assist in whatever small way that you think you could, please do, because it's so important. It is so important. Thank you for watching and do have an awesome, awesome 
week ahead. Bye.